just to say, first of all, um, you know, what, what BioLayout uses is a lot of um, modern computing power, let's say. Uh, so it's built as a graphical interface, as it uses OpenGL. OpenGL is what all the games use and films and things like that. So it likes a good graphics card. Okay, so there are certain things that you kind of must have. You must have at least one point Java 1.6. Again, most things are. It needs a bit of memory, so when you take in data, it takes it into memory, it calculates a correlation matrix, it calculates a graph, all of those are hold, held in memory. So if you've got big data sets, then it's carrying a lot on your RAM. Uh, and a good graphics card. And of course, I think I mentioned the three button mouse. Okay, so have people got laptops? Who's got what? Are we all? Okay, so some of them, sh some of you are sharing, some of you are, okay. Well, hopefully you'll get ticket in turns to hold the mouse. <laughs> and you can go. <laughs> Share the mouse generously, people. Okay, um, so in theory, it should run on any, uh, I say in theory, it, it, it does kind of run on all modern computing systems, Windows, Mac, and Linux, and there should be downloads for it. I think we're going to be using version 3.2 today uh, because they haven't upgraded to 3.3, but uh, I don't think, there's one or two things I was going to show which 3.3 does, but uh, we can hopefully live without that. Okay, so the first thing I, is, is getting your data in here, and what I'm going to start is some very basic data formats. So if I, if I jump you all into a big graph straight away, then it might be a bit confusing. So in terms of getting you orientated to the navigation, to the basic concepts of, of graphs, then I'm going to start off with some easier uh, data sets. So, so for most part, uh, you can put most of the input file together as a, a text file or a um, simple dot text in Excel. So a lot of the data preparation you can do in Excel. Excel is quite a powerful machine, a powerful tool. Uh, you all know how to use it, the basics of it. Um, so uh, uh, being a ninja with Excel is quite useful for preparing uh, data. Yeah, but so let's take the most simple graph format. So in a graph, we have nodes, we have edges. Okay, That's the kind of basic graph format. And the most simple way that you can explain nodes and edges is basically the pairwise relationship. So node A is related to node B. Node B A is also related to node C. So if you put two columns of data in as a text file, then this is what you'll get. So let's open that. So you should have, uh, so again, if you're getting behind, please shout. I can always come from behind here. Obviously, I can't see what you're doing on your screens, which is probably a good thing. Uh, but. Um, I'm happy to stop and help you, but please shout. I can't see if you're struggling. Okay, to keep up. So take this pairways file, and let's just drop it in here. Okay. So you should end up with something like that. So first controls, yeah? Have we all got that? Are we there? <laughs> okay. <laughs> the noises have started already. Very good. Okay. <laughs> we all got over the way moment. <laughs> right. So if you press the left button, it'll rotate. Okay. So left button is rotate, right button is way <laughs> is the zoom. Okay, so right button is the zoom, and then the middle button is the translate. So translate means sideways, left, right, however you want to say it. Okay. So the other thing that I'm going to just mention now is it doesn't matter so much for these small graphs, but it will matter for bigger graphs. A graph has a center of rotation, okay? And in big graphs, if your center of rotation is here and you want to look at something over here, then you have to go all the way around like that and it becomes pain. So <laughs> the next thing is if you shift and press on a node, it becomes the center of rotation, okay? So the life revol revolves around that. 
So obviously, if you're making a graph of your friends, you would be the center of rotation, okay? The other thing to say is how you select nodes, okay? So if you press shift and then drag uh, of the left button, you will select a, a bunch of nodes, okay? So just press shift and then drag it, you select those nodes. If you click on a node, it, you'll select it also, okay? And if you then press Alt, you can press select other nodes here. Yeah? So you can basically, you know, what you're going to be doing is interacting with your data. You need to be able to learn how to select things, and there's a few more tricks for selecting things, but those are the basics. You can basically just go around here and select nodes that you want to select. Okay, <coughs> while we're dealing with things simple, we might also begin to see how we can see what things are, okay? So node names. So if you go into view and show all node names, you can view it like that. And we might want to make these bigger. So we can go here and make them slightly bigger. And we can see all the node names, OK? Make sense? Happy? OK, so really, as far as this graph is concerned, all we've put in is a pairwise relationship the edges have no value, it's just nodes, it's just edges, and that's all we've got, okay? So there's not much we can do with this. It, it is what it is, it's a wee graph of nodes and edges. Okay, so if we go to the next one, <coughs> if we go to the next one up, this is exactly the same type of graph, but now we have an edge weight. The third column contains the edge weight. Uh, so this in your sample file is called weighted pairwise. Okay. Right. So do you see the difference now? We now have colored edges. Okay. So the colored edges now indicate how strong that edge is relative to other edges. So... You know, edges do, you know, most of our life is focused on nodes, but edges do matter. And in this case, as I said, what we had done is introduced a weighted graph. And you can see here that the redder an edge is, the higher the, the value it associated with it. So the tool takes that edge weight and then turns it into a color description that allows you to, to look at that as a color. Now, what we can also do here is we can reinforce this. So under the Edges tab, so this is the button up here. If you press the Edges tab, then you see this here, it's called Weight. Okay, so this is coloring edges according to their weight as defined by the input file. If I change them to color, which is where Laura was on when she opened, you see they have no weight now. Okay, you can't see the weight. They've just been colored by the colors we've selected. So by pressing that, that means we want to see weight. So quite often when I'm b viewing big graphs, I'm not interested in edge weight, and I'll turn it to, co to, turn it to color and make it a color like we've got here. The other thing we can do here is press this button. So another way of reinforcing edge strength is to begin to uh, show us how the edge weight varies here. So I'm going to make it 9 for the sake of it, and then apply. So now what you can see is that edge weights are not only reinforced by color, but they're reinforced by th edge thickness. Okay? So it's a way of visually implying that some relationships are more, not all relationships are equal, some are more equal than others, if that makes sense. That's a bad quote, I think, in this case. Um, so hopefully you can see uh, that there and why I do that. 